Hello everyone, I'm Precious. Welcome to our online tutorials. If you missed the last one, I'm going to be putting the link on this so you can just um, watch the last tutorial is on our basic um, bodies block. You don't want to miss it. So today we'll be learning how to make our kimono top or gown like the one I'm putting on. So if you like it, stay tuned. You can make it. I decided to embellish mine just to make it stylish and I used hook here to hold it together. So you can just make yours, you can make yours a short sleeve, you can also make it this big, it just depends on how you want it. I'm going to show you all the techniques you need, and I mean yes, the fabric is Ankara silk, for those that might be wondering what fabric is it, silky fabric is Ankara silk. So I'm going to show you how to make yours, I hope to see your practical, so let's get to work. Okay, to cut a kimono top or gown. You need a tapu, you need a scissors, I'm using a brown pattern paper, so you need this also. You need, remember our body's block from the last lecture, you need your pattern of your body's block so you don't have to construct all over again. You need color pens, markers, you could use pencils, you need pins, pin tucks to hold down your pattern. You also need your French cuffs, I love to use two of them. And you need a ruler. This is the French curve. You need a ruler. Depends on the length you're working with. Like I said, you need a brown pattern paper. And lastly, you need your measurement book. Here I wrote the required measurement. We need the length, your desired length, if it's a top or a gown. You need your desired length, you need your shoulder measurement and your sleeve measurement. So make sure you add your accurate measurements on these lines. So you add your accurate shoulder measurement. Remember, if your shoulder is 16, if you divide it into two, it will be 8. So our fabric or our pattern paper will be on fold into two. So we'll be working with 8 inches as the shoulder. So you need the sleeve length as well. If you check our, uh, the first tutorial video on how to take measurements, I showed you how to take measurements from the center of your shoulder to your desired sleeve length. That is how you'll be taking the measurement for this. So you just use everything together. So be sure to put your accurate measurements here. So we'll cut now. Okay, here I put the brown paper on fold into two as you can see. Now I'm just going to place the pattern um, of our body's block on it like this now I'm just going to be working with the length of this paper so just don't worry if you I will show you I'll tell you what to do if you want yours to be longer so I'm just gonna adjust it to this length and secure it with my pin tuck I've done this remember my body has um, a lot a um, seam allowance on it so I don't need to add any more seam allowance I'm just going to extend my shoulder line. I turn my shoulder line like this. Remember, I'm tracing this. So this is just what I need basically, my shoulder line. Then you have to determine your sleeve length. Your sleeve length. So if you're working with um, your sleeve length, let's assume our sleeve length is 7 or 6. I will mark my shoulder measurement. Remember, if my shoulder is 16, it will be 8 inches. So I'm just going to mark from the center front to 8 inches here. And from here, I'll be putting in my sleeve length. So the sleeve length is 7 inches here. Now, I'll come down to this point. From my shoulder, I'll come down by 3 inches. Or you can make it to, it depends on how... Um, you want it to be, you know, this the part of the shoulder of your kimono is what determines how sloppy, depends on how sloppy you want it to be. Okay, so as I was saying, the shoulder slope is very important when you're making a kimono. Um, it depends on how sloppy you want it. You can use two inches, you can come down from your shoulder line by two or three inches, it doesn't really matter. Now, another good thing about your kimono is that you can determine the neckline you want. Here on our pattern, we use 3x3 three three, if you remember, but I'm going to be extending it 3x4 um, just for those of us that maybe the ones you want to make will not have opening in front. You want to be able to wear it with ease. So you want your neckline to be as wide as 4 or 5 inches. 
from your center front so i'm just going to be marking 4.5 inches so you can make yours four or five it depends on your body um, your stature so from where we have our slope here you remember our measurement for our chest line which is eight inches so i'll be using eight inches here to open it up because that is where our sleeve will pass through so it doesn't get stuck there or too tight so now that i've gotten all these points i'm just going to connect my lines remember it has all the same allowance but for those that are just joining us for the first time that don't understand anything about the seam allowance you're making a kimono because it's usually a top that has a lot of ease you want to add two inches seam allowance to your bust your hip and your waist or more like if you want like the one i'm making i'll show you how i went about it so but let's just continue with this so for the type i'm on like what i did is this from my hip line i just connected my with my french curve like this you see i just connected the line like this so this is optional as well when you're doing this you're adding a lot of seam allowance to the bust area so if you're making a top for a top this might be too big i don't know but it depends on what you have in mind but if you want it to be stylish and a little bit fitted you can um, just reduce it which means i would like to use another color paint so that it will be clear to us so if you want to reduce it, it you can just go ahead and connect this line like this to your waist and down to the length like so so you can use your french curve to follow the lines and connect it like this let me use this other one so you can use your french curve it helps you it's a very vital tool it helps you achieve a perfect line okay so this is it for the top so just in case you want to make a full gown you can just continue all the way to the length of your desired gown now let's come back to this um, sleeve and the neckline I'm going to be taking off my body's pattern because I've gotten what I wanted I've shown you how to go about the one I'm on you can also extend the sleeve length as long as you want to is optional so i'm just going to take out my body's pattern and continue to work with my neckline now remember this from the center front to here is my shoulder measurement from the center front to this line also is my neckline so i'm just going to extend or mark my neckline depth the depth i want remember most kimonos don't have opening in front so if you want your ne neckline depth to be down you don't want it to be more than five inches if you get to six um you are going up over your you want to show a little bit of cleavage so let's use five five inches is okay so we'll go down by five inches so i'm using my neckline width is 4.5 by five inches so you can also make yours four, four by four it depends just so that it doesn't get stuck around the neck area and you can wear it freely that is why we're using enough seam allowance so if you're cutting the back you can reduce the neckline so that it has a little bit of balance and the reason for all this seam allowance is so that we can wear it with ease now let's talk about our shoulder slope remember i said you come down by three or by uh, two two inches so if you're coming down by two inches you don't want to mark it from here you want to mark it from where you have your sleeve length this is the shoulder from the shoulder we added our sleeve length so if you're coming down by two or three you mark your two inches down in from your shoulder line you go down to two or three inches then you want to use your ruler or your curve from where you mark the uh, your, your two inches you connect it straight to your neckline like this so you can see i have that shape now remember we have two lines here and i told us i'm going to be showing you how i went about the one i'm on so if you want to make the type i'm on you just want to come with this line but if you want yours a little bit fitted, you want to come with this line. Remember, our bodies has that and all. But when you are making a kimono, you don't need the that. You just need your pattern or your bodies. And the bodies here we're working with has seam allowance and all. So you don't need to bother yourself about putting your seam allowance. But just in case you drafted your bodies without seam allowance, you want to add two inches to it so that it will be free for ease of movement and to wear also. So now that I've connected my shoulder slope, I'm just going to connect the line from my sleeve length to uh, my underarm hole. 
or the just to get the length of the sleeve this is for ease i will just connect it like this so this is it i'll be cutting like this and this now this is the sleeve of your kimono you remember i said your sleeve length is optional if you want it three inches if you want it two inches extra from your shoulder just watch our video on how to take measurements you understand what i'm talking from the center of your neck to your desired sleeve length so from the center of my neck i got my shoulder and my desired sleeve length it's easier when you're making a kimono like this so this is where i'm going to be going to remember i said if you're making a long gown you want to work with the longer paper or you can just place your pattern on your fabric and extend the length so it's all optional if you want it like mine mine i made my sleeve longer up to 17 inches i just place my fabric on fold and mark from my shoulder uh from the center front up to 17 inches then i took my shoulder line and came down by two or three inches is optional you can use two or three inches for my shoulder slope and i connected my shoulder slope all the way to my neckline so ladies this is the front of our kimono i'm going to cut it out now and cut the back i'll show us how to cut the back it's basically the same thing you're just going to be placing your front pattern on the back pattern unfold to cut so i'll be cutting remember i always keep tips for cutting as a beginner you don't want to hold your fabric like this and cut you just want to place your hands on it and you cut like this it's good to cut like this it helps you your fabric does not have to move and all keeps it in place so this is the front piece of our um, pattern of our kimono all cut out just like i said if you want to open the front like the way mine is you can just slash the center like so it's optional but if you want it as a top you can wear a belt over it you can put your belt line here and just put your belt strap and you can wear it with your belt you can wear it like this is always stylish and beautiful so i'm going to be cutting the back pattern now okay so i've placed the front pattern on another folded paper um now the only thing you can do if you want your front and your back neckline to be the same now you just have to trace it but if you want your front neckline or your back neckline to be higher than the front all you need to do is this with your french curve you just go in there and reduce it so for the back you can come down by three inches or two for your neckline and the rest of um the, the kimono top or your gown you just trace it out so i'm not just going to waste our time by tracing all around i'll just cut it out like that so that's why we need pins you need to secure the front on the back pattern so that you can cut it out now don't forget our kimono jacket i'm sorry our kimono top or gown is very easy to make you can make this in less than 20 minutes you just sew it and use your bias to tape it and you're good to go okay everyone so this is our back pattern and the front of our kimono so when you're joining it back you want to join with half inch like this and if you finish joining if you notice it has any squeeze or puff around this area all you need to do is to notch it be careful so that you don't notch into your seams so this is it now we know the importance of our bodies so as a designer or a beginner i believe you should draft your body's block and have it just keep it down it will come in handy and useful all the time so this is our kimono front and back thank you i'm precious okay ladies hope you okay sorry i always say ladies i believe well there are gentlemen here too okay ladies and gentlemen hope you enjoyed the tutorial i love to hear from you all your suggestions any ideas you know contributions just your feedback so i hope to see your practicals as well practice make, uh, makes perfect remember designers are not lazy people thank you to our next class i'm precious bye